You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. There are mornings that I wake up on the ranch and I'm hungry and I think to myself, what will I eat today? Then I stop thinking because if I care about my health, I've got to care about what I eat, which is why I eat Charky and who is a very big sponsor to this show. If you don't know about Charky, check it out on Amazon or go to Charky, C-H-A-R-K-I dot website. Because if you're living the drone life, you're going to need snacks. And if you want to keep living the drone life, you've got to take care of your health, which means you've got to be cognizant of what you eat. You don't want things full of preservatives. You don't want snacks full of high fructose corn syrup and all that crap. That's why you'll love the surprisingly good taste of Charky. Check it out, charky.website. Yes, that is a website. And welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. Guess what episode this is, Paul? Uh, I think we just took a alcoholic shot. Celebratory <laughs> beverage. The slurring of your celebratory. <laughs> it's, it's, it, was, it, off. <laughs> it was not that celebratory, I promise you. Not yet. <laughs> we are very professional around here. <laughs> anyway, uh, we are excited because... Wow, 600 episodes, Rob. Yeah, I was just telling Paul, congratulations for making it through 600 episodes with the bald guy. And I said, I think it's actually the other way around. <laughs> hey, why, don't, why don't you guys vote? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tell us what you think. Who's luckier? <laughs> It's probably Rob. And there's oh, already, no, they it's... already say in the drone you community, Paul looks like a handful. Ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> you don't look like a handful. <laughs> anyway. Uh. Oh, guys, welcome to the show. What are we talking about today? Well, it's a very interesting question. It's a good question. Just a couple of episodes ago, you were saying, guys, I want you to think deeper about these questions. And I think this guy did. Really? Yeah. What is... I think you're going to like it. Ah, we're not going to get into it. We'll just listen to it. Well, today's question is brought to you by our friends at videoblocks.com. If you want a subscription-based website to get clips, you need to finish a production you're doing, a ranch job you're doing, a real estate job that you're doing, and you want to show the local area, but you don't have time to get the aerials, check out videoblocks.com forward slash drone creator. Why? Because you'll save a hundred bucks off of a subscription for a year to get what you need to finish your productions. All right, Rob, why don't you go ahead and play that funky question? Hey, Rob and Paul and Drone You. My name's Nick, and I'm in coastal South Carolina. I've been watching your podcast on YouTube for over a year now. It's been a real asset for me. I am part 107 licensed and sell landscape photography prints on my website, so getting cool shots is valuable to me. My questions have to do with one of the privileges under part 107, which is exceeding the 400-foot altitude ceiling when within 400 feet of a structure. I've studied my local area on the regional sectional chart and have found 1,000-foot high radio towers in a relatively unpopulated area. They are in Class G airspace up to 1,200 feet before it turns into Class E airspace. My intent is to use them to my advantage by flying near them so that I can legally fly higher than 400 feet in order to get a much better vantage point of the local landscape. My first question is, is this legal? And my second question is, is this ethical? I'm curious as to what you guys think. Thanks, guys. First of all, thank you very much for the question. Guys, if you have a question, go to astronew.com. We'd love to hear from you. I like that he included the ethical question as part of that. I do, too. It means he's thinking beyond what just the law says is right and is wondering what's morally right. Yeah, what's the right thing to do? That's awesome. You know what? If more people thought that way, I, heck, let's get really philosophical size. You want to philosophize? Well, let's philosophize. All right. What a better world it would be. It'd be a better world if we were all philosophizers. That's right. But we're not. But most of us are hypocriticizers. Ooh, good <laughs> word. I don't know if that's in the dictionary. I, I think it's in the George H.W. Bush dictionary. <laughs> it probably <laughs> is. So let's maybe just describe the scenario a little bit first, right? So there's a 
a radio tower X number of feet high? This is a great question, by the way. I know. you. you I like when you really like a question. Well, <laughs> it's funny because I actually just talked to Ted Wilson about this just a couple oh. weeks ago. And Ted Wilson, if you guys don't know, is a certified flight instructor and does have a couple of classes here at Drone U. Um, he teaches airspace and weather in the part 107 section. He's got a school up in Denver if you're interested. He's a great guy. De- Ted is awesome. He is um, awesome. I would trust my life with Ted. Yeah. Any day. He's a good guy. Any day of the week. Anyway, um, I, we mentioned this. So let's say we know the law, right? 14 CFR 107. I can fly up to 400 feet AGL unless I'm flying a building and I'm within a 400 foot radius of that building and I can go 400 feet higher than the uppermost limit of that building. Here's the kicker. If we have a radio tower that's a thousand feet, mm-hmm. which by the way, you're supposed to maintain specific distances away from these towers. Ooh. If you're in a helicopter, oh, I don't know if that actually applies to drones or not. That's where I would like some clarification. Where's the regulation that says a helicopter has to stay that far away from it? Uh, I, my point is, with 14 that... CFR 119 Part C A. Gotcha. Really? Yeah. Fact checker. <laughs> 14 and the only reason CFR, I want. Oh, no, no. 14 CFR kidding. 91 119 Part C, Section A. I made. I said that wrong. Check me out. No, no. 14 no. CFR 91 <laughs> 119 C, Section A. I was only being facetious because if you really remember that, I'm sick. Why? It's because that memory is, is pretty cool. Anyways, you know there's carry a on. psychological trick to memory, right? Of course, there's a psychological trick to everything. There is, Rob. I'm not just saying these. Like, these are hacks that make I'm, my life easy. I'm not just saying that. You're just Did saying. Did you know? We're getting psychologically off topic. speaking. <laughs> if you tell yourself to remember something and repeat it three times, just because you told yourself to remember something, you will have a propensity. I think it's. Mm. I, I forget the study that came out of USC, but it was like you have a 72 percent higher chance of remembering such thing if you physically tell yourself, "Remember this." I think he's right. The laws, right? I had no doubts. My point was, <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. It's considerate kudos, Paul. Oh, thank you. I'm just trying to <laughs> Maybe explain. Maybe just in a backhanded I'm way. I'm just trying to explain how I do certain things. Okay. All right. Anyway, here's the kicker for his question. We have a thousand foot radio tower. Class Echo airspace starts at 1,200 feet. Right. Okay. He cannot go into echo airspace. Correct. Which I think he understands. He alluded to that. Which means that the echo airspace clause overrides the 400 foot AGL of the higher uppermost part of a building. Right. But in this case, he could at least go up to that ceiling, right? He could go to 1,199 feet. Right. Yes. Okay. Now, I really don't know why someone would want to go that high. I really don't understand that. But hey, you know, if he wants a shot of the whole city, okay, I get it. Well, and that's what he was saying. I think he kind of gave us the background so we would understand why. And it's the kind of shots that he's trying to get. Totally. And like here in Albuquerque, we're totally lucky because we have the Sandias. So you can literally go to the top of the Sandias, which is a full 5,000 foot difference, Mm -hmm. and then fly 400 feet above that. (laughs) (laughs) Right. But you can only get 400 feet away from that, right? So (laughs) do what you will with that. Oh, yes. But that is why knowing the law is the only way to navigate the law because you can't navigate the gray area unless you're truly able to define black and white. Therefore, in this particular case, really not an ethical question. I mean, if he's talking about, again... There's just not. I'm not. I was thinking of an examples, but like, if as long as you're being safe and you, nobody's, you know, at risk of getting hurt and those kinds of things, then yeah, you're fine. Yeah. Very interesting. So we got to give away a membership in this episode, Rob. No, that's six oh one. Oh, okay. Because because he's in the running for the drawing. Ah, uh, gotcha. And we haven't done the drawing yet. Can we <laughs> enter Senator Feinstein in the drawing? <laughs> <laughs> If she'll, be... oh man, I cracked myself. Can you see up. her in the Facebook community? <laughs> she would get lit up like a Christmas tree. Yeah. <laughs> All oh, right, gentlemen, funny. ladies, boys, and girls, thank you so much for listening to the show. Because of you, we're sitting here, peachy as can be, having a good time, having a good time, doing what we love, recording episode number six hundred. That's going to do it for us today, guys. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You.